good evening. Thanks, Thanks for stopping by. Before I proceed, let me just clarify something. I know the sign on the window advertises dream analysis. We haven't had time to change the sign. Due to recent events, our business had to pivot you know, to meet um, current demands. So we are now an obituary writing service. Um, you know, it's not that far off because most people seek dream analysis because they're having bizarre, disturbing, near-death types of dreams. Those dreams aren't what most people think they are. You might think those dreams are your overheated brain letting off steam and actually they're warnings, warnings that your life and your afterlife are poorly developed or crumbling, not headed in the right direction. The life you build now will be your eternal home. Your dreamland is only going to be as good as the life you construct here. 9.9 9 spirits who commune with myself and my colleagues say their biggest regret is not having invested more in their dreamland, not taking time to build their life and their afterlife to their ultimate goals. It all starts with writing your dream dream obituary. So, in order to have the afterlife that you want, you're going to have to think very deeply about what you would like your obituary to say. I have three sample obituaries here. One of them will be a better fit for you than the others. Only you will know which one is. Yeah, you're not the first to think it's morbid to write your obituary before you're even old or have been slammed with a terminal diagnosis. You can write your obituary now and live your best life accordingly. any sense of how much a motivator, how much of a motivator a well-considered and honest obituary can be. When you frame your life through a final, no second chances lens, that can give you the highest resolution image of the map you need to follow to get there, wherever there may be. For you. A well-written obituary might be just what you need to kick your life into high gear. It's like writing out a list of goals, only after the fact. A pre-death obit is a list of aspirations and lifetime achievements. So the first obituary we have on offer is called the Seven C's. Career, cats, kids, crosswords, cooking, and charity slash church. Salt of the earth people are most comfortable with this type of life trajectory and post-life memorial and afterlife. To be honest, there isn't all that much to say about some folks, and that's okay. A lot of folks are satisfied with leaving this plane knowing that they made a living. 
made some more people, who then made some more people too, ad infinitum. And they feel reassured knowing that they didn't get into too much trouble in their leisure time. And if they did, they certainly don't want it exposed over their coffin. Oh no. Especially not in a situation where they can't even pipe in and plead their case. You understand, I'm sure. But have you ever considered how odd it is that we don't list people's trespasses and transgressions, their picadillos and foibles, in their obituary? not common, though it has been done a few times, usually towards a noble purpose. Oh, as much as we feel the urge to do so at times, ultimately no one wants to humiliate, defame, or malign the dead. Maybe out of respect, maybe out of lingering superstitious fears. I once read an obituary, and I read a lot of obituaries, in which a young woman struggles with heroin addiction, were recounted in relative detail. Her family described how she became estranged from them, and had been living on the street for many years because she refused to seek treatment and accept their help. When she crossed over, she had not been in contact with her family for quite some time. So, the family used her obituary as a way of reaching out to other addicts and encouraging them to seek help. Personally, I feel that family should be commended for their bravery, their honesty, and their concern for others facing the same struggles as their daughter. Maybe it would benefit the living if obituaries were more honest, and if some of them were more lurid. Maybe that would light a fire in the seat of the pants of some of the baddies, and the baddies might step into the light and make amends while they still have time. Maybe each and every one of us should have our stories told, the good, the bad, and the unfiltered over the casket. Bouquets at the podiums of a funeral home. But that's a revolution for another generation, perhaps. Oh, I digress. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Right. Right. The seven seas, kids' career, cats, crosswords, cooking, charity, slash church, obituary. I was about to read you a few examples of this model. Are you ready? Taylor was a graduate of Lincoln High School and studied elementary education at Middling University. She taught fifth grade for 32 years and retired from the Centerville Area School District in 2015. She was an active, lifelong member of Discovery Church. Taylor enjoyed yoga, Zumba, hiking, cooking, spending time with her family and three cats, vacationing at Disney World, and taking care of and three children. Visitation and services will be private 
will be held at the convenience of the family. Here's another for you. After graduating from Nightingale School of Nursing, Alexis worked as a registered nurse at Meadowbrook Memorial Hospital. She was married to her college sweetheart, Michael Michaels, with whom she had two children, Matthew and Madison. Alexis was a lifelong parishioner of Sacred Heart Church. Her passions included bird watching, watercolors, photography, and baking. The highlight of her life was realizing her dream of traveling to Malaysia to visit the Kuala Lumpur Bird Park and Sanctuary. In lieu of flowers, Alexis has requested donations be made to the National Wildlife Refuge. And here's the last example of the Seven Seas obit. Jacob graduated from Springfield High School and started his own landscaping business. Jacob also coached Little League Baseball for over 23 years and volunteered at the Haven Animal Rescue. He was a member of the Kiwanis Club and enjoyed gaming, playing bingo, and doing crossword puzzles. He was a member of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church where he sang in the choir. In his later years, he enjoyed walking around the mall. Jacob encourages his friends and loved ones to make a donation in his honor to the animal shelter of their choice. Clearly, no one was harmed in the living of these lives quiet lives. The secret formula for the seven C kind of life is commitment, constancy, community, and contentment. Contentment with the simple things in life. If you follow this path, your legacy will be a short line of people who will remember your mouth-watering chocolate chip cookies, your heartwarming homemade holiday cards and decorations, your caring contributions to their education, and as such. So overall, on a scale of 67 to 84, with 67 being the least and 84 being the most, how deeply would you say that these obits resonated with A 70, I see. And what about these bits specifically reflected? How you would like to be remembered and live on? decide not to go with this one. Okay, on to the next. This is an example of an obit for high achievers in the worldly sense of that term. Strivers, aspirers, outdoing the Joneses, the Wags, the Lees, the Garcias, the Patels, the Muellers, the Wins, the Smirnoff, Cons, those type of people. No judgments about which type of person you are. Our goal here is to simply find your best fit, obit, and build your possible afterlife based on those aspirations. Right, so the Da Vinci style life 
and obit goes something like this. Sophia was a doctor, lawyer, engineer, architect, and world-class pianist. She earned her medical degree from Harvard Medical School. Her law degree from Loyola University. Her engineering degree from MIT. And her architectural certifications from Cornell. When not performing life-saving surgeries, negotiating corporate contracts, or performing at the Met Opera, Sophia was participating in triathlons, tending her apiary, and designing tiny homes for war vets. Sophia leaves behind her seven adopted children and her 14 rescued animals, including two geckos, seven cats, one white elephant, and a porpoise. Here's another for you. Liam was a four-time gold medal winner in four different Olympic sports, bobsledding, skiing, javelin, and ping pong, before he went on to invent a square version of the wheel and a prototype for a patented carbon capture device. Upon retiring from his highly accoladed career as a sports columnist for the New York Times, Liam purchased a vegan winery in Northern California and a new drought resistant type of grape, a hybrid of moon drops, crimson, and black muscat grapes. Liam loved scuba diving in the great coral reef, car racing, scaling Mount Everest, and he also published three detective novels in his lifetime. He was an avid collector of rare vinyl records and boasted the largest collection in North America. Liam will be buried in his lichened hypersport. In lieu of flowers, he has requested air fresheners. And here's our last example of the high achiever, Da Vinci Obit. Olivia was a haute couture, fashion designer, Instagram model, makeup artist, dancer, DJ, producer, actress, and film producer. She was most proud of her formal wear collection and jewelry designs for dogs, as well as her signature label of ancient Egyptian cosmetics. Olivia was married three times, each to a more powerful, wealthy, and dashing self-made billionaire. She had son. She had one son with each of her husbands. Loved artisanal furniture, mimosa, herba mate, and soul cycle. Olivia has donated her impressive collection of wine aerators, decanters, and chandeliers to charity. The secret formula, the Da Vinci kind of life, is an insatiable need for achievement, a relentless competitiveness, and a deep insecurity that makes you feel like no matter what you do or how successful you are, you'll never be good enough. If you follow this path, your legacy will be a medium-sized line of people who feel deeply insecure about their own abilities because they feel small in comparison and like they're living in your shadow of gargantuan greatness. 
There will also be a few descendants who will be inspired by your drive and will achieve great things because of the model that you set. Now, would you say you're more like Sophia, Leo, and Olivia, the Da Vinci's, than you are like Taylor, Alexis, and Jacob, the Seven Seas? Mm -hmm. Overall, on a scale of 32 to 45, with 32 being the least and 45 being the most, how deeply would you say the Da Vinci obits resonated with? Thirty-nine, noteworthy. And what specifically about these obits reflected how you would like to be remembered and live on? You know, once you've moseyed on over to the afterlife. I see. Thirty-nine is slightly better than the 70 you gave the seven CISO beds. But hold on, though, no, there's still one more set that we need to test drive. The final example of the type of obituary we have on offer is for the altruists, the spiritual types. This model is called the good and giving obit also called the Enlightened, or the Fred Rogers Obit. You seem like you might be one of these types, based on that tattoo, and the way you seem to know how to focus and make authentic eye contact, and wait until I'm done talking to take your turn speak. Interesting. Most of the famous people you typically hold up as saints uh, do not pass muster when subjected to beneath the surface scrutiny. You know, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, John Lennon. So, we had to go a little more obscure to find an impeccable, inscrutable model for the good and giving obit. Alan Naiman. Alan Naiman. Okay, here's this obit. Alan Naiman was a Washington banker who quit his very lucrative job to become a social worker. He lived a frugal to the max life, bought his clothes at a grocery store, held his tattered shoes together with duct tape to get even more mileage out of them, drove the same car for decades, and rarely dined out, and if he did, it was usually at the dollar menu. Instead of spending the millions he inherited from his parents on a lavish lifestyle, Alan socked that money away, as well as the larger part of his $67,000 a year salary. And when he crossed over at the age of 63, he willed his entire $11 million fortune to charity to improve the lives of orphaned, poor, sick, deprived, and disabled children. Friends and family were astonished that Alan had that much money in the bank, since he'd lived a life of extreme self-denial. Alan's gift to various charitable organizations has had an immeasurable impact on the lives of countless children. What the world needs is more Alan Nyman's. <sighs> I 
I had a feeling you'd choose that one. Okay. Now let's work in some of your personal details. If there's one legacy, okay, most important detail, if there's one legacy or gift to humanity, or even on a smaller, more realistic scale, to your community that you'd like to leave behind, what might that be? It's okay if you don't know right this second. But if it doesn't pop into your mind within a few minutes, then we may have a challenge. That means you're uh, a little out of sync, out of touch with your life mission. And most altruists have at least a vague intuition about what their mission is. Ah, oh, what a relief. It's never pleasant to get snagged on the what will my legacy be question. That is fantabulous, yes. You want to find a cure for greed. Well, I can't think of any more noble of a cause than that. It's a very daunting pursuit. You shouldn't lose a single second working on that one. I certainly don't want to hold you up, keep you tied up here when you have that kind of work to do. You need to focus. I'll tell you what, you run along and get started on that. And I'll finish writing all of this up and I'll have it and sent over to you by the morning. Oh, I wish you all the best, all the best in achieving your life mission. Even if you don't find a way to eradicate greed or achieve your highest, most supreme goal in your lifetime, any dent that you can make to that problem will be a, a valiant achievement. All right, now off you go. You must get started right away working on that problem. Good night. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Good night and good luck. You're going to live an outstanding, praiseworthy, noteworthy life.